Hello, welcome back. It's Emma. My name is Emma. Yes, it is. <laughs> and today I'm gonna take you along with me as I try to plan out my entire month of reading for the month of May. Um, everything I'm gonna be reading, I'm participating in some readathons. We have book clubs, we have just so many books. There's so many books I wanna get to in May, especially because I had a very mediocre reading month in April, probably my worst month yet. I still have yet to find any book above a three star this month, which is so saddening to me. So, um, and I didn't plan out April, which is why I think planning out May is just gonna be so much better because I can kind of tell what sort of a mood I'm gonna be in for the month. And like, I have a whole bunch of books to fit that kind of mood and mindset that I want to be in and that I know I'm going to be in. Whereas in April, it was just kind of me randomly picking up books, which didn't work as much. And I just really wanna find books that I want to read. So anyway, we're gonna go through my bookshelves again. Kind of the same as I did for March. If you'd like to watch that video, I have my reading journal right here that I'm gonna fill out. I have some readathons to introduce you to and tell you my TBR for. And by the end of this, I think we're just gonna have a huge stack of books. Hopefully that will be absolutely incredible to read. I'll take you through my audiobook holds, um, different audiobook softwares I've been using to get some books from and books I wanna read myself. And we're just gonna have a good old afternoon picking out books, way too many books that I realistically won't get to, but a girl can dream. Yeah, so as we go through my bookshelves, they're honestly kind of a mess right now, but here is the reading journal I've been using this year. This one was very kindly sent to me by the creator, the artist, which is Stella Bookish Art. I will leave her Etsy shop down below as well, but let us see what the beautiful spread for May is. So this one begins with like a favorite quote section. And then for May, it's a quote by Dostoevsky. I say, let the world go to hell, but I should always have my tea. Flip it open. This is what we're here for, to fill the to be read sheet out. So, all right. So I think we're gonna start with the books. Like I know I have to read for some readathons and book clubs and stuff because those are the most important. Those are the priority. All right, let's do it. I feel like this is a very like, Lord of the Rings hoodie. Definitely something like Alyssa would wear. You can't tell me otherwise. So I think once again for this video, I'm going to start off by getting the essentials out of the way, which like I said, is the book clubs I'm participating in and the readathons and stuff like that. I think hopefully this month I have three. Number one, just to list them very quickly. And if you would like to participate as well, everything will be up above or down below or somewhere in your spatial vicinity. Um, first up, we have the Dickens versus Tolstoy, the Great Debate Book Club, which is hosted by myself and Carolyn from Carolyn Mary Reads, in which we read all of Charles Dickens and all of Leo Tolstoy's works ever. So definitely have a book to read for May, which I'm so excited about. Um, I'll get to that in a second. And I'm also participating in the Dark Academics Book Club, of which I'm also a host, along with some of my lovely, lovely best friends here on BookTube as well. We actually don't have a group book for May because we have a whole readathon. We have a whole readathon planned out. So I will be um, figuring out my TBR in this video. I literally have no idea what I'm going to read for any of the prompts or anything like that, but I'll take you through that as well. And then finally, I want to participate again, I think, in Invisible Cities, which is a really cool project hosted, project hosted by a bunch of people here on YouTube, more booktubers. They are, oh, all of them are so lovely. I'll leave the details below, but they have been reading books from all around the world. So I need to find out what the three countries they've chosen for May is. And then based on kind of what I have on my shelves or what I can find in audiobooks, I will make my decision. So like I said, we have a lot to figure out. Let's begin. Oh my goodness, what is that? I'm so glad you asked. This is the book for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club. So this is the first one oh, I will be reading. Um, we chose War and Peace. We have War and Peace for April and May. So as you can see, I'm currently that much of the way through in War and Peace. I'm 418 pages through. I am absolutely adoring it. So this book is around 1300 pages long. So this is number one priority. I'm loving it. I think this is going to become one of my favorite books of all time. As you can see, there's just been so much in this book. It's unbelievable. Um, I actually cried yesterday. I broke down and cried over War and Peace yesterday. So 
yeah this is definitely the book i'm most excited to finish in may but it's also going to take a lot so this is definitely number one on this tbr pile for sure for sure for sure all right so let's put it there there we go okay so i just checked the invisible cities countries for may and they are madagascar north korea and romania so i know i have books on in my tags list on libby for north korea but i'm honestly not sure about madagascar or romania so let's go exploring okay so i just looked on i'm on my tags list on libby and um in my tags i actually have one that i've read from north korea most of them are memoirs so the one i read i read this last year is a thousand miles to freedom by unsun kim really 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 good highly recommend but i do have some other memoirs in here the first one is called escape from camp 14 by blaine harden um, which i'm guessing is about north korea's prison camps yeah, so this is told by the journalist Blaine Hardin, who tells the story of Shin Dong Yuk and through the lens of Shin's life unlocks the secret secrets of the world's most repressive totalitarian state. I also have In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. This is the one I've heard the most about. Um, yeah, so this is her story of her escape from North Korea as well. Um, I'll see what else I can find. I don't think, let me see if there's any from Madagascar or Romania in my text. Nope, we got nothing, but I'm very interested to find some. So let's do a quick search of like Madagascar literature. All right, so actually for Madagascar, I was able to find this one on Audible. So I put it um, in my tags. It looks like no one has read this. It's only the second book to be published in English from Madagascar. It's called Return to the Enchanted Island. Um, and it sounds really interesting. And this was pretty much the only one I could find on audiobook. So I'm gonna tag it and we're gonna see if we can get to it this month. Otherwise I will probably pick up North Korea for um, invisible cities, but this one sounds really really interesting too. All right, so now I'm going to tell you Everything for the dark academics readathon. So we have a lot of prompts Some of them are like specific book prompts and some of them are other things like for example We have like bake something compose something like write something make a reading playlist or make a playlist for one of your favorite books for specifically the book related prompts we are doing it kind of based on as if you're passing a class or like graduating a class or writing an exam or something. So for those we have extra credit, which is to read one of the host's favorite book. So all of us, there's five of us, we all chose our top three favorite books or just three of our favorite books. Um, and so I'm good, definitely, I'm definitely gonna be picking one of either Mary, Carolyn, Kira, or Lucy's favorite books. So I'm really excited about that. We also have history, which is to read a mythology or mythological retelling or folklore or something like that book. We have English class, which is read a classic of literature. We have politics, um, which is read a nonfiction work. And then the last one we have is geography, which is to pull up a country randomizer and randomize a country and then read a book from that country or just to read a book from a country that you've never read from before. So this means we need to find books for one, two, three, four, five. Five different books for these five prompts. So I think what I'm gonna do, of course you don't have to do all the prompts, but I just want, I just wanna read so much in May. I just wanna read so much in May and I wanna have um, ideas at least for every prompt. So I think just for English, because I need to read War and Peace, and of course this is a classic, I'm gonna put this one down for that prompt because I think I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna need some help with this readathon. So War and Peace is gonna be on the list first. And then for extra credit, I think I wanna read one of Mary's books that she listed. I was thinking of doing Carolyn's because she listed Upstream by Mary Oliver which is one I've wanted to read for a while, but I just don't think I can get my hands on it right now. Um, but Mary listed The Traveling Cat Chronicles, which I really want to read, as well as Heidi. And I've seen the movie Heidi. I used to watch it all the time with my grandma when I was younger, but I've never read the book, so. Okay, I'm just pulling up my tags list and both The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa is 
available. So I think I might just take it. This one says, with simple yet descriptive prose, this novel gives voice to Nana the cat and his owner. I actually started the Traveling Cat Chronicles um, last year, but I put it down for some reason just because I wasn't in the mood for it, but I think I might pick it that up. It's not that long. It's only six hours long, so it should be very doable. And I'm just, Mary said it was just so wholesome, so sweet, very hard hitting as well, very emotional. And that's kind of the theme I want for this readathon. Oh, of course, we have War and Peace, which is also hard hitting, but I just really want magical springtime goodness. And both Heidi and the Traveling Cat Chronicles seems like it'll do that. So then we have Heidi by Johanna Speary, which is seven hours long. This is about Heidi, who is a five-year-old orphan. It's all set in the Swiss Alps and you just follow her and what she gets up to. So I don't know which one I want. I think maybe I'll just try picking maybe both of them up and see what I'm feeling and then just read one for Mary's because I really want to read some of her favorite books. So that is the first two prompts done. For history, to read a mythological book or a mythology retelling or a mythology from around the world kind of thing, I think it's time to I think it's time to hit the bookshelves. Let's hit the bookshelves. Okay, so I'm gonna start here with what I have in, just to make sure and see. Oh, this is really dusty. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I made it worse. Anyway, we have My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante, which I want to read, not mythology. I'm currently reading The Silent Patient and Swimming in the Dark, so I'll have both of these finished. These will be gone. And then The City in the Middle of the Night is one I have in, but I don't know. It's a sci-fi. I don't think it's like a retelling of anything. It's just about a frozen planet, I think. So nothing here. This one I've been wanting to read for a really long time. This is Kwaizen or Japanese Ghost Stories. I think this just translates to Strange Stories. This is Japanese Ghost Stories compiled by Lafcadi O'Hearn. Um, this is one on my shelf of mythology books and I would really, really like to get to it. So I'm sure oh, there might be an audiobook. I have um, Japanese fairy tales as well. So I think I'm either gonna put this one down or the audiobook I have in of Japanese fairy tales for this prompt. Okay, you know what? I actually just found another one on my shelf that is also available as an audiobook, so I think that's what I want to do, and that's from ancient Greece. I actually was able to find Edith Hamilton, the Greek way, in audiobook form. Um, this isn't solely about mythology, but yeah, it's just based on a study of Greek life and civilization, literature, philosophy, art, um, and I know there is mythology in here as well. I can't believe I just found this. I've had this book on my shelf for a really long time, so I think this is the one that I'm going to be putting down um, because I've never read Edith Hamilton. Anyway, this one is definitely going to go on the pile. So excited. All right, for nonfiction, this is the one I'm going to pick because I keep getting in Are We Smart Enough to Know How Smart Animals Are by Franz Duvall. Um, so this is all about how like kind of we think ourselves as the superior, you know, species, but it's all about animals and their brains. And yeah, I'm really, really excited. I've wanted to read this book for years and years and years. Clearly it's a sign because a bird is yelling at me to read it, so. Um, yeah, this is going on my TBR as well. Are we smart enough to know how small our animals are? I'm so excited. All right, so finally, the last thing I need to do here with my burb, my burb friend, is to randomize a country or to read a book from a country I've never read from before. So maybe we'll randomize, but then I'll also see what I have. Sir. What? So I think I'll do a randomize and see what I get just because that's really fun, but then I'll also go through my shelves because I really want to just like focus on reading the books I actually own, you know? So here we go, random country. Okay, I just pulled it up and like, I didn't get to like do a dramatic click, but I got Jamaica. Okay, so Jamaica might actually work out perfectly because I do have 
um, Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands by Mary Seacole. So this is an autobiography of Mary Seacole, who was born in Jamaica, um, and she and her travels during the Crimean War. So. Alright, so now that we have got all of our readathon book clubs and everything like that planned out, that brings our grand total up to five books, maybe six. I wrote down five just to see if I could get to them all. Um, definitely not holding myself to a strict thing at all, and if I don't like any of these books, I'm just not going to finish them, but I just really like having options and it's fun to plan out things because the lord knows we don't have a lot to plan right now but um i do have a lot more books i would like to read because i have a whole end of exciting holds coming in on libby i have a lot of books on audible that i'm very excited to get to and i also have a book i'm currently reading with my own eyeballs um kind of as a nice just i've, I've wanted to read this book for so long i don't think i'm gonna finish it by the time april is over so we're gonna i think bring the alienist into may this is a book I've had on my shelf for so long, but this is The Alienist and Other Stories of 19th Century Brazil by Machado de Assis. Excited. As you can see, <laughs> I'm literally seven pages in. I'm on the second short story, which is called The Education of a Poser, but um, I read the introduction and the first story a couple nights ago. So good. I'm absolutely loving this. So glad I finally found time to pick it up and I definitely want to bring it in to May with me. So this is what I'm going to grab. And now I have a whole bunch of books on my shelves that I have audiobooks coming in for. So let's see what they are and perhaps add them onto the list too. Okay, you probably, maybe you saw, I don't know, but one of the books I currently have in is My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. Now, I've never read from this author before, didn't even know that they existed before this book was actually popped into my P.O. box um, and just came into my life. So um, I do have this audiobook in right now. I know this is a story of friendship set in 1950s Italy. Um, so I am, yeah, I'm just really excited. Like I said, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get to this before April, but I will still have it in May. So I'm gonna tentatively add this one to the list. Um, yeah. Okay, and then finally, it's finally Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. I have never read Anne of Green Gables. I've only seen the really old movies, which I adore, but I still just can't believe um, I've never read this. I am finally, I feel like, in the perfect mood for Anne of Green Gables, so I'm gonna put this one on the list because I am expecting to get this in in May, and we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but I'm just so excited about this one. This is- Alright, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 books on this TBR, which is pretty doable. I think that's been my average so far this year, so let's run them down. Um, one I'm most excited about is probably The Alienist. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a whole bunch of short stories about mostly Rio and Brazil and kind of the upper class. The introduction very much said it's kind of like an introduction where he reflects and is a mirror for those people to kind of laugh at themselves, see themselves in it and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a lot about kind of what's going on at the day and I'm just very excited. Like I read the first story, like I was saying, and his writing is just incredible. It kind of already made me laugh. Like it was just very funny. So that is The Alienist. Of course, I already mentioned War and Peace a whole bunch by Leo Tolstoy. Um, like I said, I think this is gonna be a new favorite book of all time. 
it's just incredible if you're unfamiliar with what this is about i was pretty unfamiliar as well but it's just about the napoleonic wars we're set in russia we're following <laughs> 600 characters um and it's just so good like i promise if you are intimidated by this book it is just so much more accessible easy to read than I think any of us thought probably and i would highly recommend because i'm just honestly having the time of my life it does take a while for things to pick up i do want to say but once you get into it once you hit probably like book two i want to say i at least for me i was just in it to win it and now i am completely obsessed and would sell my soul to war and peace so definitely also on the tbr for may and then for the dark academics readathon i did pick the traveling cat chronicles for the prompt to read a host favorite book so i did pick mary's the traveling cat chronicles which is about a cat i think it's set from the cat's perspective named nana and they're going on a trip together i remember when i started it we have the owner who is visiting an old friend of his and the cat goes along with him and like you're set from the cat's perspective and so it's just like i don't know it's really heartbreaking to see like what the cat thinks and stuff like that but um that is the traveling cat chronicles and then to go kind of nicely with it for the non-fiction pick i did choose are we smart enough to know how smart animals are which like i said is a non-fiction all about different animals i believe it provides like a lot of case studies like i think we go over like the octopus elephants and stuff like that and just learning how animals brains work um what their memory is like what we consider like intellectual thought what thought processes are like and basically just breaking down like all of the barriers that we've set up between ourselves as so great because we're human and just really seeing how alike we all are and i think it's just going to be really good and yeah so that is the pick for nonfiction. I also randomized the country and fell upon Jamaica. So I did throw on The Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands. Like I said, this is an autobiography and pages that Mary Seacole, the author, wrote about her time serving as a nurse in the Crimean War. It says her fame rivaled that of Florence Nightingale's. Mary Seacole traveled widely before eventually arriving in London, where her offer to volunteer as a nurse in the war was met with racism and refusal. Undaunted, she set out independently to the Crimea, where she acted as doctor to wounded soldiers while running her business, which was called the British Motel. Hotel. Sorry. I think this is going to be incredible. And yeah, it is another nonfiction as well, so we could just always switch things up, but I decided to throw this one on the TBR as well. For Mythology 2, and just kind of in that prompt for history, I did pick The Greek Way by Edith Hamilton, which I'm really, really excited about. I got this book, I don't know, I, I remember I ordered this off of Thrift Books, I think maybe last year or something like that. This is a pretty old copy, but I haven't read any Edith Hamilton yet, so I'm really excited to see her take on it. And I believe this one kind of reads more like a nice narrative nonfiction, if I'm not mistaken, but that is the Greek way. Like I said, I also put on My Brilliant Friend by Elena Frante. Um, this one is about a friendship set in 1950s, I think Naples, and they're growing up together. The two girls learn to rely on each other ahead of anyone or anything else as their friendship, beautifully and meticulously rendered, becomes a not always perfect shelter from hardship. So we're following Elena and Lila, I think, yeah. Um, at a moment when Italy is undergoing momentous change. They're going through change as they're growing up and in their friendship and stuff like that. So I really hope this is good. I really hope this is good. I honestly have no idea what to expect. I think people recommended with Ferrante, I start here. So let me know your thoughts if you read her, but otherwise I think I'll be able to let you know very soon what I think of this because I am determined to get to this one as well. Um, also very excited. I've been in a huge middle grade mood recently. Um, I recently read The House in the Cerulean Sea and I'm just looking for more kind of books like that. I also know I have in The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townstead. I think that one's coming in in a couple weeks. So it's going to be a toss up, I think, between Anne of Green Gables and Morgan Crow which will be interesting, but like I said, I just, I feel so bad that I have not read this Canadian classic um, ever. I actually put on a play in elementary school where I was Anne of Green Gables. The resemblance is not striking at all. So that is that one. And then I decided to throw in three more really, really super short audiobooks on here because I like to read or listen to very short audiobooks as a kind of 
you know, little break from the longer ones and just to be able to read more books. I especially like listening to short books of authors that I've never read from before because it kind of gives you like a little bit of a sample or a taste test of their works. And then, you know, you're not making a huge commitment to them. If you don't like them, it's not really a big deal because you're not spending hours and hours listening to their content. Also decided to put on In Watermelon Sugar uh, by Richard Brodigan or something like that, I think. Um, as you may imagine, this is the inspiration for Harry Styles' song, Watermelon Sugar. This is part of the counterculture generation, um, and it is about eye death, which is like, is it a utopian place, I think? And we're just, it just sounds like it's gonna be absolutely crazy, a fever dream, and I think it's about utopia, if I'm not mistaken. It's a utopian vision kind of book, but in Watermelon Sugar, it just sounds really, really interesting. I'm intrigued, so that is that one. And then the last book, I promise this is the last book on this TBR, I decided to throw on First Love by Ivan Turgenev. I don't think I ever say this man's name correctly. I've never read from Ivan before, but I do have fathers and sons on my shelf. And I thought while I'm reading Tolstoy, I would love to include more Russian writers. So First Love is a bit of a shorter one, like I said. And this one is about a dinner party where a whole bunch of people are sitting around talking about their first love, their first love affair in their life, the first time they fell in love. Definitely gives me a lot of symposium vibes. Um, but I think the main story we're following is this guy who had, I don't know if it's kind of an unhealthy obsession when he was younger with this woman, but I think we're only following that one particular instance of first love in Turchinev's short story, so I don't know. But I decided to throw it on, would love to give it a sample. So those are all the books that I hope to read in May. Um, I hope we can get it because I wrote them down, it kind of looks like a lot, but we are doing readathons and stuff like that. We have book clubs, so it does give me a lot of motivation. We should be doing reading sprints as well, um, or listening sprints, depending on whichever you can do or want to do. So very much looking forward to those, but I think hopefully during the readathon, I will be reading a lot of these. And I, of course, will be doing vlogs as well. So thank you so much for coming along. This is fun. I'm glad I got everything figured out and I'm really excited for a lot of these books. So if you're reading any of these in May, I would love to know. I'd love to know also what you're reading in May or what you're reading for the readathon too, if you're participating or in any book clubs or anything like that, because I just really like knowing what, what you guys are reading and liking at the minute. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go get on and try to make, I don't know if I'll make a head start on these, but yeah. In the meantime, I'll see you very soon in my next video. Ciao.